Even though I've already kind of shown you how to set this up on uh, the other computer, I want to show you how to import it. You're going to get a memory stick, like I said, one of these thumb drives. Put it in either the back or the front. Just find a port and stick it in. Now what the computer will do is bring this up and a lot of you will be tempted to open a folder and just go find it. The problem is that it'll open it in a paint program and not in this program. So just exit out. Don't, don't open it from, directly from that. Now that you're in the program, which by the way is found in the bottom right corner, it's right there, usually it'll be open. But here we go. I've already opened the template for the drawer front. So we just go up here, file, not open, go to import. It's very important. Now it's not here. There's a bunch of files here, but you won't find it in this stack. This is what's on the desktop. Go to my computer. And then you'll go down to devices with removable storage and it'll say removable disk or something like that. It's right here. It's always at the bottom. Double click and now I need to find it. And there it is right there. So you hit import, click and drag. And like before, I'm going to make it just a little oversized and you guys have already seen this. So I'm going to go quickly and just get it in the right place. That center line there is there so you can center it or have it off, whatever you want to do with it. But once it's ready, here is your setup. Go to File, Print. Sometimes this lags a little. File, go to Print, which is right down here. Or just hit the Print button right here. And it brings up a dialog box. Go to Preferences. And this, remember, this is for raster cutting. We're not vectoring out anything. We're not cutting something out. So we're going to raster cut. And as you can see, the vector cutting settings are now, I can't do anything with them because it knows I'm not doing it. Now with raster cutting, I always have the power at 100%. Now I just play with the speed. For most of my cutting, I leave it at the 50%, right in the middle. If you have a very hard piece of wood, maple or something, we can lower it down to maybe 30. But after about 30%, it doesn't get any darker, it actually just engraves deeper, and that doesn't do any good. There's no reason. It's just taking too much time. So, but for alder or oak or cherry or most of those, I do, I have it at 50% and that's fine. Now this is ready to go except for one more thing. And it's the thing that most people forget. It's the easiest to forget. Right here, the piece size in inches. Unfortunately, the size here, the 14 by five and a half, does not automatically get dumped into here. You have to manually put it in. If you don't, it thinks it'll be an eight and a half by 11 and your image will be in the wrong place. So simply highlight it. I know it's 14 by five and a half and I'm getting that number from here, the 14 to five and a half, same order, horizontal, vertical, and then hit OK. And then when you're all set, everything should be ready, hit print and that will send it to the laser engraver. And from there, I'll show you how to engrave. If what you're wanting to do is a vector cut instead of a raster cut, first import your image, and we already went through how to make the lines, get the outline and make it look sharp. But now the setup is slightly different. Um, let's go to print and it's back to preferences again, but now we're going to vector. And so now the raster cutting settings are untouchable. We can't change those at all. Now with here, we have speed, power and frequency. Frequency I rarely uh, change. Frequency is simply how, how many times, how quickly is it flashing the laser per second? 2500 hertz, that's fine. You can change it up or go down and it, does, it only slightly changes how uh, accurate it's going to be. 2500 is in the me middle and it seems to work just great. Um, speed and power. I always, again, I have 100% power always. But with vector cutting, it's the speed that determines how thick that material is. Now this thing could go through up to a quarter of an inch, which is really thick. We're only going through, generally, we're going through 16th of an inch. So if I show you right here, this stuff right here is only a 16th. And as you can see, I've cut some out of it. By the way, when you're cutting out vectors, please don't take it out of the center of a big piece, un unless it's part of your longboard. If this is a scrap piece, take them out of the bottoms and corners because I'm going to be using this area here. It's just a piece of scrap that I want to use. I just need the pieces out of it. So for veneers, for 16th of an inch, I found that about oh, around 15% will work. We'll cut through it, but not so far through it that it'll start going into the backing board. 
Now I say a range because the more we cut on this machine, it makes smoke and that smoke will start um, gumming up the mirrors. I told you before that it reflects three different times to get there. So three different directions and then down. Uh, those mirrors get a little bit dirty and then the laser doesn't cut quite as well. So it does change. If it's dirtier, then we'll crank it up to maybe 20%. If it's clean, I've, I've found that even 12, 10 to 12% will do it, but I'm gonna kind of go in the middle and say 15% and I'd be pretty happy with that. Again, make sure that this matches that. So I'm now doing a six by six, whoops, let's get six by six. And now that will be the same and it'll be in reference to my picture back here, it'll be in the right place. So we just hit okay and print and that will send it over to the laser engraver. Now we need to get that set up for vector cutting. I'll show both of them as we're going.